started the second hour off with uh, Ain't That Loving You, which, uh, which is from my CD, Straight From The Heart, which came out three years ago, Right. which ended up on the front page of the LA Times and two pages inside. Yeah. Now, Paul McCartney's record gets on the front page at the bottom of the paper, not page one, column one, the bottom of page one. It would go to the calendar section, right? Right. But not mine. And uh, then on that song, Ain't That Loving You, yeah. you're on it, and so is Pete. Yeah, Pete Mazich on Oregon and Who Wild on the Bass. trio. Right, second man. I'm playing tonight with them in Orange County, and I'm playing tomorrow with them at 4 in the afternoon at the Echo in Echo Park, a barbecue. For so, a, there's, um, so there's Dose, there's Three Threes. Do you have any four fours? Not yet, I'm working on it. <laughs> you got to um, four people doing play. Oh, that, that, I remember when we uh, recorded that song. Well, where were we? It was out of Trend Coma, yeah. which, is an ac which is an acronym for Mark Doton. Yeah. Mark was in a double knot spy car, a great bass player. Right. Good arranger, good, to, uh, great engineer, great mixer. And uh, he also did my uh, next record, which was Hell Can Wait, which is out now. Right, we're going to play something from that. Uh, did you just write that song before we recorded it? Or is that an oldie? Ain't that loving you? I wrote it about six, seven months before. Oh, so it was kind of recent. Yeah. Um, I, always I remember you said, hey, uh, let's try this Motown bass line. And you showed me the bass line. Yeah, it's the one that you played, which is like a James Jamison style. Yeah. <laughs> Moving against a one. Pivot. So the one, almost like a four, to the one, but it's actually a two one. Now, if you do both parts at the same time, why, why did I even need you? <laughs> Somebody had to get close to the kick drum. <laughs> What do you think about these bands these days that don't have bass players, that just drums and guitar? What do you think of that? Well, I mean, I'm saying that because if you, you asked, why did you need me? And oh, there's I'm people, not. no, no, there's people doing bands without bass guitars. Yeah, it was a big deal about the White Stripe being, yeah, being yeah. recorded rough and raw. It was recorded nothing like Led the Led Zeppelin that some people would compare it to. Um, Hell, Jimmy Page put four or five microphones, taped them together, put them right on top of his amp, put another four or five about 15, 20 feet away at the end of a long high hall. That's how he got that sound. Not about a bunch of outboard crap. Oh, wow. It was on the mic. Yeah, you know that, that song, Whole Lot of Love? Yeah. It was recorded. His, his amp was in the same hallway that Richie Valens sang Donna in, which was where Mystic Sound was. Remember that hallway? Sure, sure. That hallway when you get up the steps? The amp was at one end, the microphones were on Thompson at the other, and Richie Valens stood in the hallway to sing Donna. Wow. I heard uh, he used a little Supro amp. I don't know. That's why I heard. But was I, it I some big Marshall? Much. It was a little Supro. Yeah, those, those things cook. Those things cook. What's your favorite guitar? Uh, well, I've, I've had maybe a hundred guitars in my life since 1960. But, um... My two favorite guitars was one that my brother had. A, he had a 56 uh, Les Paul Jr. with a little double double uh, horns. Like Johnny Thunder. Yeah, yeah, a little, a little, a little, a little um, burgundy one. And when I first met Caesar in 1970, he was really young. Caesar from the Lobo. Sure. He used to come over and try and buy it from my brother. My, my brother had a band called uh, um, a Free Road, and they were really, really good. They could all play and really sing. I mean, really sing good and play just great. So, um, that, of course, that was when I was just writing songs and singing at home. And my brother was gigging everywhere. And uh, uh, and I like that. And I, on this new record I have, I took about eight guitars of mine and three that belonged to my landlord, Tony, who's got some great guitars. And I didn't use anything but this little Les Paul Jr. that I just recently got. It's an old one? With a little dog ear. No, but it sounds great. Oh, that one we saw you at the club with? Yeah, yeah. The little thing. Single cutaway. And that's the same amp I used on this new record. 
And all I used, the only effect I used was, well, I had to use a guitar chord. <laughs> I used a chord, I used a patch chord. Gee, I'm, I, I thought I was a purist. You're corrupt. I'm, 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 I'm totally corrupt. Yeah, I used a, a guitar chord plugged into the amp. That's all I used on the new, on the new record. I used tremolo and reverb from the amp, and that was it. It was mixed by Mark Lynette. But, but you played strats a long time. Yeah, I played, played nothing but strats. Yeah. The 59 got stolen, so a while, a couple of years back, uh, Flea bought me one. Oh. That was nice of him. Yeah. He was going to play a benefit, but then he, the last minute he, he couldn't make it, he was going to Green, Greenland to play for Molson Beers, one of their last official, last unofficial gigs before they kind of broke up and nobody ever knew it. Oh, wow. I mean, for about a year they didn't play, remember? Yeah, I do. They've been uh, up and down a lot. Yeah. I remember when Anthony used to live um, in the in the um, in the in the outpost building where the Two Time Place was, right next to Pizza, just west of uh, Las Palmas on on Hollywood. Yeah. You know where the Shoe Shine Place is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always have it in movies. And um, he was uh, the office right next to my ex-wife Marilyn, who was, who had her art studio there, and he was up in a little office. And oh, in his in his new book, someone told me he says. And I was living in an office of the Outpost Building, and uh, there was a young designer, he didn't mention her name, just talked about her, and he said, whose who's, who's honorary boyfriend was Carlos Guitar. <laughs> you were honorary? Yeah. I never picked him up and threw him. <laughs> I used to do that to people. When I, I, I didn't get to the five of them, I'd just pick them up and toss. Throw them. A big person, pick them up and throw them. <laughs> Okay. It's, it's like better than punching somebody. They don't want to get up. And, yeah, yeah. And we'll run after you. Airmail. Picked them up and <laughs> throw them. Airmail. Uh, after uh, Eat That Loving You, we played uh, some uh, more contemporary. Although that was contemporary. When did we do that? Three or four years ago? That was three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah, and it, We oh, should and tell the story about it, too, because that really it, was after a hell ride, right? It was pretty near from a death call. Oh, oh the straight from the heart? Yeah. Oh yeah, I wrote straight from the heart on one of my deathbeds. I whispered the words into Marilyn's ear. I whispered the words in her ear, and you couldn't hear it. So the nurse got on the other side of the other ear, and her head was hollow. So it echoed out loudly, and the nurse wrote the words down. No, I'm just joking. And um, um, anyway, and then when I woke up a couple of days later after this heart thing, um, uh, I had, she had the guitar there and knew I wanted to play it. So I played it after I woke up, probably like, <laughs> kind of like I was so out of it, you know. You couldn't feel your fingers then, too, huh? Can you see this one? 